You can see it doesn't take very long for the pigs to get acclimated to this new pasture. They've already found their favorite spot. They're all just kind of hanging out now. One of the things that most people have been asking to see is how we raise our pigs in pasture and on the woodlots. So I've got my handy dandy tool here. This is my fence remote. It lets me turn off the fence anywhere on the farm. I'm gonna turn off this fence and I'm gonna go in and show you how we do it. I just moved the pigs onto this spot today. And the reason that I brought them here is because this is the pasture that we need to renovate or the wood lot that we need to renovate. I've been working on the fence for a little bit saying that we're gonna do some uh, work this fall on this pasture. It's mostly weeds now. There are some grasses once you get down beyond the weeds, but it's mostly weeds. And so what I wanna do is I wanna use the pigs to kind of eat down and tromp down these weeds. Then we're gonna come back in this fall with a cover crop. We're gonna kind of bring it back into shape so it's ready for pigs next year. My favorite way to raise pigs on pasture is to give them a combo lot like this. So this area right here is about three acres. It's a combination of pasture and wood lot and it works really well. Sometimes I will just take them out on just the pasture. I don't really have any areas that are just wood lot just because of the terrain and the slope of my my farm. My, my wood lots are mostly on side hills and so to have that loading area and corral area I, I include some pasture in it to give me a semi-flat spot. One of the most important elements of my pastured pig setup and my woodlot pig setup is this right behind me. This is a corral that I made that I put at the top of wherever I have the pigs. It's just T-posts and cattle panels and a feeder on a platform. And then I do have a loading chute basically that I can run the pigs up into. And then uh, this is just kind of ironic or funny haha. -ha. Right there is an old farrowing crate and I use that as the chute into the hog cart. This is a game changer for me. When I first started raising pigs on pasture, I didn't have a plan like this and trying to get pigs loaded onto the trailer just didn't work. With this setup, when it comes time to load the pigs, it's pretty easy actually for me. I can use that loading chute and I can use that farrowing crate and I can run them into my hog cart. I'll show you my hog cart. This is the hog cart I use. I think I said earlier that that electric fence remote is the most important tool I have on the farm. Scratch that. This hog cart is the most important tool I have on the farm. You can drop it down to the ground. The pigs can walk on without having to look up or step up. It's just incredible. When I got this hog cart, it changed everything for the better. But what I do is the day before I want to load pigs, I come and I get all the pigs out of the feeder if there's any in here. And I bring and I shut this gate right here. They still have access to water. They still have access to food. They can forage in the woods and in the pasture but they don't have that candy up here. They don't have those uh, Tootsie Rolls and things like that. And so what happens is the next day when I come to load them, I open up this gate, I call the pigs up, you know, some of them will go in on their own. There might be a couple that I kind of have to coax in a little bit or, or walk behind and drive in. But when I get them in here, I shut the gate and then it's just a matter of sorting them up and putting them through that loading chute. Really, this is the best way that I've found. I will put a, a link to another video, but there's a farmer in Northwest Iowa that he made a circle chute um, or like a, a circle round pen that he can come out and unfold on his pasture. And it is incredible. I wasn't handy enough to do that. So this is what I came up with. It's not as easy as I would like. If I was going to improve this system, I would like to have a portable panel system built that is uh, pig size, kind of like they have for corral, that I could just come in and set up and maybe put like four T-posts in, five T-posts in, and then it would be good to go. That's uh, my dream for the future at least. My main fences are a combination of things. I use this Premier pig fence on the outside edge. I guess by outside, I actually mean the inside. This is the fence between where the cows and the sheep are and the pasture. And then along the outside, what would be through the woods and along the woods, I use three wires of electric fence, um, you know, anywhere from six to eight to uh, two feet up in the air. It just kind of moves up and down as the terrain allows. Thank you. 
Now that I've got the pigs in the woods, it's always a good idea to come through and do a last check. I was just working on all this yesterday, double checking, making sure everything was set. I'm gonna be walking through cobwebs again, oh my goodness. Now I'm just gonna double check and make sure that the wire is tight. Everything is looking the way that it's supposed to be in the woods. But if you look behind me, this is kind of, this is kind of what the pigs have to work with in here. This is a, a south facing slope with a lot of mostly new growth trees in it that they can kind of come in and work out. Now, the nice thing is we are taking down trees selectively through these woods, trying to create a savanna. And I think in, in the future, what my hope is, is that we can have somewhat of a pig savanna that we raise the pigs in, not just purely a woodlot, but a combination of woodlot and pasture savanna style. I've probably said this before, but I consider my fence in the pig pastures to be somewhat semi-permanent. Uh, in most of it, I use T-posts like this that I've come along and just walked through and pounded in, but also along the way, kind of between T-posts, I just use some simple re-rod posts with uh, the plastic insulators on them. I don't use the step-in posts, the plastic step-in posts too much in the pig pastures because I just find that when the tree falls on them or something like that, it ends up breaking the hook. Whereas with these step-in re-rod posts, it doesn't break the hooks as much as it just slides those insulators down. Nothing breaks, I just slide them back up. Here's a good example of why I like the combination of woodlot and pasture for my pigs, is that it just gives them a chance to hang out in the shade, max, relax. They can build wallows where they feel like they need to build wallows. It's just a really good system where a pig can be a pig at our farm, which, you know, to steal those words from Joel Salatin or whoever said those first. Another question that comes up all the time when raising pigs on the pasture in the woods is how much do they forage for or do pigs really forage? I don't really have the answer to that research wise or scientific wise. Maybe someday I can go through and do a study on the amount of feed that they eat when they're not on pasture with the group and the amount of feed that they eat when they are on pasture and in the woodlots and all of that stuff. I just have anecdotal evidence. I know that when I have the pigs in the hoop house in the winter and spring before I get them out onto the pasture, I know they eat more feed that they're around the feeder a lot more. I know that when I bring them out on the pasture that they're grazing especially early in the morning and in the evenings and that they're coming up to the feeder at those times as well but through the middle of the day they're kind of staying away from the feeder. Maybe their growth slows down a little bit. I, I guess I haven't really noticed that extremely um you know an extreme case of that happening but it, it does seem like they get the the feed intake from foraging i i know they do i see them doing it i see them rooting and digging and eating and all of that good stuff i think it was joel salton maybe in an interview or in a book where he said that he thinks that his pigs get about 30 percent of their feed value from foraging i think that's a number that i feel pretty comfortable with but again it's just anecdotal In the end, I absolutely love raising pigs on pasture. While I didn't grow up on a farm, my dad did live on a farm for a while and did raise pigs. My uncles all lived on farms and raised pigs. In fact, if you watched that Minneapolis Moline shopping video that I put out a little while ago, that building there was a confinement building. There was a big slurry store, above ground slurry store. All of that's in the videos. When I was a kid, those were full of pigs. When I was eight, nine, ten years old in the late 80s, early 90s, my dad raised pigs in just any building that he had on the farm. And, and I grew up doing that. And I also grew up with the smell related to raising pigs in any building that there was on the farm. Out here, it's awesome. The pigs are able to be pigs. They're able to do what they were created to do. They move, they roam, they forage, they hang out, they have fun, they build muscle. They are just an amazing animal and I absolutely love the pigs. They are my favorite thing on the farm without a doubt. And I don't think I would raise them any other way. I love the hoop house for the off season. With that deep bedding, it is incredible. But in the end, in my experience, this has been the best way for us to raise pigs. Now, there are a lot of things that I need to change. Thing 
number one that I need to change, I think, is I need to get a handle on my pasture aspect of it so that it just doesn't come back in weeds every year. What I think that's going to look like is cover crop. Things like rye or tillage radishes or oats or corn or, or whatever it is, just annual pastures that I can plant. I haven't read a lot of research on that. I don't have a lot of ideas behind it, but I think that's something that I would like to look into. That's something that I'm going to plan on trying with this three acre pig pasture this year. Thing number two is watering systems. This is what I use for watering systems right now. I have to come out and fill it once or twice a day depending on how many pigs I have out there. In fact, it's got a leak right now so I've got to fill it even more. I need to come up with a more permanent watering system or, or I guess I should say again like my fence, a semi-permanent watering system. I've got some ideas with that again. 7W Farms in Northwest Iowa. I love what they do for pasture waterers. I think I can run a line on top of the ground or just under the ground of high density polyethylene pipe out to my normal pig pasture areas and just plumb in uh, automatic water. That would be my ultimate goal. Thing number three I've mentioned already, I need to turn this corral system into a portable corral system. Even if it's not that fancy round pen design like I talked about, I need something that I can at least pick up or put on the forks of the loader and just take to a different place, put in a few T-posts with the loader, and then it's good to go. That way I can move it from pasture pen to pasture pen. Thing number four, and probably the final thing, although there's plenty of things that we need to do, is we need to expand our woodlot and pasture areas. We have 40 acres of total land here. About 23 acres is in pasture and the house and barnyard and all of that type of stuff. And then the rest of it, the 17 acres or so, is in woodlot. And we're using only a fraction of it. Part of it is because it's divided by a pretty deep ravine that we need to take care of or find a way around. Part of it is because we need to do a lot of major fencing work. But if we could expand into all 17 acres, we would be able to do a ton of great things on this farm when it comes to pigs. So that's our pig pasture setup. Let me just say this, like by no means am I an expert when it comes to raising pigs on pasture and the woodlots. In fact, as I take you on a tour of this and show it to you, I'm kind of feeling like, man, I'm not really good at this at all. The funny thing is I had to fill out a survey or I chose to fill out a survey the other day for Practical Farmers of Iowa. And one of the questions was, would you consider yourself or what do you consider yourself as a farmer? You know, like wanting to farm, a farm supporter, a beginning farmer, an experienced farmer. And the beginning farmer, they only let you choose that if you were farming for zero to 10 years. I farmed more than 10 years. But as I walk around this pig pasture and as I look at all these pieces and I talk about all the things that I need to do, man, I still feel like a beginning farmer. I'm trying to hide here between the corn and the asparagus to get out of the wind. I just wanted to show you our pig pasture setup, our woodlot setup. I would love to hear two things from you. Thing number one, what do you think of it? How are we doing? And thing number two, do you have any suggestions? Suggestions for seeding, suggestions for pasture, suggestions for a corral area, things that we could do better, things that we are doing completely wrong. I would love to hear all of those things. Just put them down in the comments below. If you do enjoy the videos, give them a thumbs up, subscribe, bell, all of that sort of stuff. I'm really enjoying making them for you. Don't forget, there's also a podcast. I just released one last week. Just go to iTunes or any place that you get your podcasts. Look up The Beginning Farmer Show. Give it a try. See if you like it. It's just something that I've been doing for years, actually. Long before I started making videos, I was doing podcast episodes. So go check that out. Check out the videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're gonna get back to work. Something, surely there's something I need to do.